Chapter 25 Over the next several months, I regain my strength tenfold. As more truths are revealed, the biggest shock is the discovery that some small wildlife exists further from impetus. Fish and turtles are my favorites to watch in their natural pond environment, but also admittedly tasty and necessary fuel for the constant work rebirth needs as it grows. Gavin teaches me how to fish, so we spend the latter part of some mornings and evenings sitting at a lake two miles from rebirth's center. We're careful not to drain the stock, since it's questionable how many still exist. Gavin forces us to fish in silence. He claims it's so we don't disturb them, but I'm sure it's so he can avoid more of my questions. He offers several times to teach me how to hunt the rare skinny squirrels that appear in certain areas further away from rebirth, but I leave that to him. I like to eat the results of his hunt, but I want no part in killing them, especially not using the hunting traps he sets up. They're too close to humans, I try to explain. I can't intentionally hurt an innocent being with a heartbeat. It brings back too many bad memories of what Impetus did to us. Liam teaches me about herbs and natural remedies to care for physical ailments. That soon becomes my primary role, finding herbs, mixing them, finding out what they can do, and aiding the people of rebirth when they are in need. Gavin once admitted he found out Impetus planned to give me the role of a nurse for my future. Since I never gave them the chance to say that at the future ceremony, it was a nice, semi-redeeming piece to hear. At least the elders' board would have gotten that part right. I would have enjoyed being a nurse. Although I'm sure my fate would have turned out the same, considering I'd put up a fight if I were ever told to do something as barbaric as kill an infant for no good reason like they did to Liam's son. By happenstance, I also discover I'm a decent boxer, what started as a challenge from Nate turned into me joining his training session three times a week. Marlena and a few other women will watch us and support me with hoots and hollers as I face different men in the makeshift boxing ring. I'm good, quick, and can throw a targeted punch. It's your intuition, Liam tells me with admiration in his eyes. You always know what people will do next. I win some matches, but I lose others. We don't go hard on each other because we don't want to cause harm to another person in rebirth. Losing is more like admitting one person has better moves or more endurance than the other. Even with that common rule, Liam refuses to face me in the ring. I give him a hard time, but secretly I'm glad. I couldn't imagine even pretending to hit or attack that face of his. My early mornings have become routine, with spending time with Liam while Gavin is away. Every morning, he now steps into my hut with a soft knock on the wall and a blanket in his hands. Even though I have a few chairs now, he'll spread it on the floor for breakfast like that very first day. Then we will walk out and make a quick breakfast before anyone else is awake and return to my hut to eat it. We confide in each other our dreams about different places we would travel based on pictures in old books. If only the world still existed like it did in the before. If only it was safe and not in ruins. Maybe we could go there together. I enjoy seeing life through his eyes. Even with what he experienced in Impetus, Liam still believes there's nothing but good people with good intentions and hope of a better world to come. Marlena and I have become extremely close, sharing all we can about our life stories and relating to each other more than I initially thought we could. Gavin was right in knowing we'd get along. I told her a lot about Jacqueline. Marlena, in return, shared stories with me about her best friend, Katrina, who ironically was one who helped me with my hair and makeup the day of the Futures ceremony. Marlena was so excited to hear Katrina was doing well, and asked me to describe her since it had been five years since they last saw each other. Even after all this time, she still misses Katrina like I miss Jacqueline. Impetus seems like a distant place now, 
I still can't get Jacqueline and all the young children who don't know life any other way out of my mind. To think about a community that restricts feelings and emotions and uses the punishment boxes so freely is terrifying. It's hard to fathom I once called it home. One other person has since joined Rebirth, so I'm no longer the newbie. When I first heard someone else was coming, I held my breath, hoping it was Jacqueline. But it was someone two levels above me, an unpaired named Valerie. She is quiet and keeps primarily to herself. Marlena was there for her like she was with me when I first came to Rebirth. I helped out when I could, but struggled with my anger as I watched Valerie writhing in pain through remedy withdrawal. It's inhumane that people have to go through this, and wrong impetus purposely prevents its people from feeling, only to later punish them with those exact feelings. Gavin has kept a tight lid on divulging more truths about impetus and his life, which has driven a wedge in our relationship. Some days I'll escape to the edge of the woods, wondering what's out past the tree line and how to find my way back to impetus. Sometimes, Gavin will sit by me in the silence. He acts like he wants to say something important, but never says a word. Then, when he's ready to go, he'll kiss me on the forehead and leave. We argue all the time. I've begged him to take me back to our old mating grounds to renew our friendship, to bring us back to the way we used to be. But he shuts it down each time with a stern, No, it's not safe, Evangeline, then refuses to discuss it any further. He rejects my invites to my hut, too, never once seeing the inside and how I've decorated it with Marlena's help. It's almost like I'm making him miserable by being here, I complained to Marlena one afternoon. No, I don't think it's that. In fact, I know it's not. He waited way too long to get you here. She pulls on blades of grass and wraps them around her finger. He carries heavy burdens on his shoulders, leading rebirth, rescuing others. There's a lot that keeps him distracted. Marlena will always be the first to come to Gavin's defense. Despite her and I getting closer, it's clear she will advocate for Gavin no matter what. Early one morning, Liam and I walk out of my hut together, laughing so hard we are bent at the waist, my arm on his arm, our joy reverberating off the trees. Typically we try to be quiet since most people are still asleep, but I had just told Liam about my incident yesterday, running into a naked Tyler as he came out of the pond. A few of the guys had stolen his clothes, leaving Tyler with nothing to hide his body parts with as he came running through rebirth. The bewilderment on my face was enough to set Liam off in an infectious, laughing rage. I look up to see Gavin getting food out of the storage container. He is frozen with one arm outstretched in the air, watching us walk toward him. I let go of Liam's arm. When Liam's laughter abruptly stops, I don't have to look at him to know he spotted Gavin, too. Gavin is usually gone by now. He's never here this time of day. Hi, Gavin, I spit out. Gavin resumes his movement, attentively grabbing the food he needs. One by one, he's throwing items in a sack, avoiding eye contact. Hey. Late start this morning? It sounds like I'm talking to a stranger, not my best friend of twelve years. Yep. You need help with anything today, Gavin? Liam asks. Gavin throws the flap over his backpack. No. He's staring straight at Liam, his normally light blue eyes now dark and cold. He walks past us, his shoulder grazing mine as he pushes by. Hold on, okay? I tell Liam. Liam nods and continues to walk toward the food storage. Take your time. I'll get breakfast started. I love how understanding Liam is of everything. I chase after Gavin. Gavin! I know he hears me, but yet he ignores me. Gavin, stop! Gavin turns around, a sheen of sweat on his forehead and a bobbing Adam's apple. What? What is your problem? Why would you act like that? How long has this been going on, Evie? I've heard people talking, but I thought... I thought there's no way. 
What are you talking about? We weren't doing anything, I exclaim, shocked by Gavin's obvious accusations. He came out of your hut before the sun has risen. Do you think I'm stupid? Gavin's voice strains a delicate balance between shouting and respect to not wake anyone else up. I think it's obvious you don't have all the facts, I retort, more careless about what other people may hear. Gavin throws his backpack on the ground. Grapes roll out, the dirt soaking up the juice. You expect me to believe a man coming out of your hut this early in the morning means nothing? Just because you don't visit me doesn't mean that when someone does, that something is going on, Gavin. You are so self-absorbed you don't even know the truth about how things have been for me since I've been here. I throw my hands in the air, all of my frustrated thoughts over the past few months reduced to two sentences. Heads poke out of the huts, sneaking peeks at the commotion, but I don't care. Gavin needs to hear how ridiculous he's being, and apparently I'm the only one who will stand up to him. Gavin opens his mouth just to close it again, and bites his inner cheek. After a moment's hesitation, he succumbs with a nod. Yeah, okay. Let's talk. He looks around at the other faces. But let's go somewhere else. I want to tell him no. At this point, I would much rather continue my happy morning with Liam where frustration and drama don't exist. But if Gavin is finally willing to talk, I want to take advantage of it after battling him being silent for much too long. I have things long overdue that need to be said. Without speaking, I stomp through the path of huts to the edge of the woods and find a log to sit on. I wait for Gavin to follow and eventually join me. Instead of sitting next to me, as he usually does, he sits on the ground, his knees bent, while his eyes linger on the grass next to him. So you two are together now, or what? He asks as though the answer is already assumed. His question brings me right back to a few months earlier when Liam asked the same thing about Gavin and me. It makes my temple throb and my ears burn. I refuse to explain anything about Liam. There's no need. Gavin keeps to himself and blocks me out of his personal life, so there's no reason I shouldn't do the same thing. No, I respond, keeping my word choice to a minimum. What then? Does a casual hookup? Seriously? What do you take me for? And since when did you suddenly decide to care? I fire back. Gavin stops the word missiles, letting silence settle the air before speaking again. I have always cared. Don't you ever doubt that. Just tell me the truth. Are you with Liam? I know deep down Gavin cares about me, and it's his twisted way of trying to protect me, like he's been doing since the first day we met. I don't always agree with his approach, though. I am being honest. We spend time together, but we have done nothing that would suggest to anyone we're a couple. Which is more disappointing than I can express to Gavin. Liam has never made a move on me, despite the hours I've spent wishing he would. He respects you too much. As soon as I say it, I know that's the exact reason. Although Liam wanted to clarify Gavin and I were only friends, his respect for Gavin is what holds him back from taking things further with me. Oh, Gavin responds, surprised either by the fact that Liam and I are innocent or because Gavin caused the lack of action. I watch the corner of his lips turn upward. It's the final push to set me off. Let's get the record straight that you have no right to care about what Liam and I do or what we are. He's been there for me. He listens to me. He talks to me. Compare that to what you do, or don't do for that matter. Gavin sighs and rubs his hands down his cheeks. Yeah. That's all you have to say? Our battles are usually frenzied, full of shouting words and us shaking in place to get the other person to see our point of view. His lack of passion is shattering, as though he's given up on whatever it is we always fight each other over. Yeah, it is. Sorry. I just... I don't know how to say anything else right now. One of us will have to give. Gavin stands with a shrug of his shoulders. 
All I can hope is that someday you'll get it. He doesn't kiss my forehead this time. He turns around and walks away, leaving me alone on the log to dissect the oddness of his temperament. I fight back tears. I don't understand. I desperately want things to be the way they used to be. I once knew what I was getting with Gavin. He was the man who always showed up in our designated meeting place, who desired to teach me, challenge me, and listen to me. Now it's all over the place. When I felt nothing, it was simple. Now I feel too much that's directed toward him. He frustrates me to the point where I fight the desire to push him away, but in the same breath I want to crawl up in his arms, feel his lips on my forehead, and know everything will be okay. Ugh! I push myself up from the log, letting my anger out in one single cry. Why do I let him make me feel this way? I run back to the center, dodging people coming out from their huts, trying not to think about who heard my discussion with Gavin. Checking the food storage and cooking area, Liam is no longer there. I run back to my place, but he's not in there either. Popping my head back out of the hut, I catch sight of Benjamin. Hey, Ben! I call out. Have you seen Liam this morning? Benjamin throws his towel on his other shoulder and says, Not today. I'm sure he and Nate are out by now. Thanks. I lean against my hut, irritated I've lost Liam for the morning. The chill of the dry mud is cooling the sweat accumulating on my back. Good morning. Marlena's cheerful voice makes me turn my head in her direction. Her brown hair is loose on her shoulders and wet, glistening from her morning bath. Did I hear you ask about Liam? I wish I've shared with her all the conflicting feelings I have between Gavin and Liam. It would be nice to have someone like her provide wisdom now that I'm desperate for it. When I was heading to the pond, I saw Gavin grab Liam. They walked out toward the hunting grounds together. I'm assuming they're working on filling the food storage today, since it's running low. I close my eyes and pinch the bridge of my nose. Facing Marlena, my voice drips in distress. I need your help. We need to find them. Gavin is quite angry, and I don't think Liam is the best company. Marlena pieces it together as soon as my plea reaches her ears. She drops everything in her hands to follow me. We run out of rebirth to the main hunting grounds. She's fast. Liam and I have gone on several runs together over the past few months, but Marlena outpaces me and I'm struggling to keep up. I didn't know she had that in her, but shouldn't be surprised at the same time. She seems to do all things perfectly. We take turns yelling out, Gavin! and Liam! as we run through the woods. We check the hunting grounds, the lake, and key spots for herb picking. There are no traces of either one. We stop only to catch our breath. What do you want to do? Marlena asks. Let's go back. I admit in defeat. Hey. She puts her arm around my shoulder. It'll all be okay. Everything will work out the way it should. I have to analyze her face to make sure she isn't Jacqueline. That's exactly something Jacqueline would have said. Race you back? I don't know. I push thoughts of Gavin and Liam fighting out of my mind as I dash to rebirth to gain a head start. The wind carries Marlena's laughter to my ears, and it doesn't take her long to catch up. She keeps my pace, but as rebirth appears in our sight, she breaks out in a sprint. I try to chase after her, but am much too winded. I arrive in rebirth a minute after her. By that time, she's already in a conversation with someone important. Liam! I cry out, and it's enough motivation to increase the speed for my final few steps. He's confused by my overexcited reaction. Hey, Evangeline. Sorry about our morning being ruined. No worries at all. My words are choppy while my breathing steadies. I'm sure I'm sweaty and streaked with dirt from all the running through the forest. The last thing he needs to see on top of it is me passing out from trying to keep up with Marlena. Where have you been? I told him we were looking for him. It's a good reason for him to feel special. Marlena interjects with a wink. Gavin wanted to show me 
things. Now I know why he looks confused and disturbed. More details, please, Marlena requests sweetly. Liam shrugs in an obvious inner debate of how much he can share. Gavin mentioned there needs to be a backup here, in case anything should happen to him. Liam shifts on his feet. He's looking more at Marlena than he is at me. So, Gavin showed me what he does when he's away. And what needs to be done here. He showed you everything? Marlena is in awe as though she's looking at an alien that arrived to invade the planet. Yeah, Liam gulps. At least I think so. But you can't tell us anything, I state matter-of-factly, not as stunned as they are. Already Liam's body language has transformed. Within a matter of hours, he's been converted to another Gavin. He finally turns to look directly at me. No. I'm sorry, Evangeline. I promised him. Once you know everything, this all makes sense. Everything he does makes sense. I won't know everything, though, right? None of us will, except the ones Gavin deems worthy of knowing. It's like we're back in impetus, forced to believe in a system we don't understand. I turn my back on them and walk to my hut. Evangeline! Liam calls out, but Marlena cuts him off with her soft voice. No, let her be. Once inside, I pull my door curtain closed and hope that no one tries to follow me. It's the first time I miss having an actual door to lock people out. Gavin played the game well. He could have yelled at Liam or told him to leave me alone, but instead, he did something much worse. He gave Liam the secondary power of rebirth and told him secrets that have put a wedge between Gavin and me, so now they will put the same wedge between Liam and me. How strategic of him. Gavin keeps trying to control me as though he has the right. He saved me from impetus, and that's exactly why I'll never live like that again. I need answers, and will make him tell me the truth if it's the last thing I do.